Want to give you guys an idea of what I'm doing here. Please ask questions. Right? Can you guys do me a favor real quick while you're here? We can get some more people. Can you please um, share and like the Facebook Live right here? Click the share, click the like. We'll get some more questions in here and it's going to help you guys out as well. Um, Joanne, we are in Florida. Yes. Yep. Uh, will that go into the three point? Um, surely something like that would probably go into the three and the four. Okay. Something like that where it's not a huge upgrade. Just depends on how much kind of coding is involved. In you guys are going to see me looking off to the side here because that's where the questions are coming in. But, um, something like that should, would probably go into both of them, the three and the four. Okay. All right. So let's show you what I'm going to do here. So what I have here is these here are Jackson's baseball uniforms, okay? So the thing with his uniforms, what's up Jerry, how are you? Is the coaches uniforms, these these uniforms for, for the coaches are really, really uncomfortable. So all of us decided we don't want to wear these. They're, they're those shirts, for especially for adults, that are really short. So you raise your hand and it's like a halter top. So we went out and got some, our own. I already made my own shirts, but we, um, another one of the coaches wants shirts for him as well that aren't in these styles. So here's the cool thing about this, and I'm gonna, let me see if I can get this to move down here. And kind of point down at it. Oh. Can you guys still see that okay? Oh, we lost a lot of light there. Let me see if we can clean that off. Is that a little bit better? Okay, and I'm gonna try, like a yes, doesn't look good. So, here's the deal. What I'm gonna do is, with this shirt here, for example, okay? And I think it's because I'm pointing at the outside light is why a lot of our, there we go. This shirt right here, I didn't have the actual design for this, okay? So, this is one that we got created by one of our local screen printers that we outsourced to because we had to do, we did them for all the different teams, right? So, it just said, Sting Select, something that's very easy. Obviously, I didn't want to go to them and say, hey, can you send me the file and this and that. So, what I did is I just laid this on the ground and I took a picture of it, okay? Took a picture of it, dropped the picture into CorelDRAW and the TRW Design Wizard, and then I did a trace from there. So I just basically drew it out because this isn't just a basic font right here. This is kind of a, a logo just in a text like this. This is just a basic kind of Arial bold right there, but this one I had to do an actual trace. So. I just laid it directly on the ground, put my camera, just my cell phone camera, right over top of it. I took a picture of it, and then I'm going to flip this around here and see if I can't get it to where you can see my screen here. And I'll try and get it to where that glare is not it. Okay? So you can kind of see my screen here. And. All I did is I brought it into Corel Draw and the TRW Design Wizard. And with the picture, I just did use basically my Beast Blind tool. And I just did a trace around it. Now, what was nice about it is you, I didn't necessarily have to trace all of it, okay? All I traced was that inside black area. And then I just did some islands outside of it to create the white and the orange. Does that make sense to everybody? Does everybody understand kind of how I did that? So I had my picture and then the black area right here, all right, when I would come over and I would do my place and fill and if I didn't have stones on it, see how I just did an island fill there and it added that outside layer, okay? And then what I did is I made the next one a little bit bigger. So that one's 0 0.08. I know you can't see it real good. And then the next one, maybe I did 0 0.1 and another island fill. 
okay? So now it has those two outside layers. So I can turn this one to orange or whatever I want. Let's make that an orange. Get rid of those blue outlines and see how easy that is. So when you do something like this and it has an outline like that, don't necessarily you don't necessarily have to trace all of the black and then do a white area and then do an orange area because it's really hard to get it perfectly as far as your spacing throughout it all right so all i did is over here i went to the outside i did one island to the outside and i did a 0 0.08 contour so the white one's a little bit thinner and then the orange one is a little bit bolder to kind of stand out a little bit more and then there you go there's my design and then with the select part at the bottom all I did with that is I just grabbed my text I put on my caps lock I typed out select and let's make it a little bit bigger I used an aerial bold okay and then I just used my spacing tool so right over here in our edit tab I just clicked on TS for text spacing and I just drag that out a little bit and then I can move that to wherever I want and then there's basically my design and I want to change that to an orange okay does everybody see kind of how how to do the trace that is if you just do a search um Elisa if you just do a search on the B spline tool okay so just go to our YouTube channel, search the Beast Blind tool. And basically what that is, is, and I'll show you here. I'm going to take this black and duplicate it here. And I'm going to change this into a bitmap. So you can see it's all pixelated now. Okay. So to do a trace with this, what I would do, and I'll just give you an idea with the S right here. I would click on my Beast Blind tool and... I would start in this corner here and I would hold down the V, drag it over, go to there. And then I would go to here, to here, to here. If I hold shift, it draws a perfectly straight line to here, come down to here, over to there. And that's what I'm saying. As soon as you guys learn these tools and see some of the different videos we have that show you how to use these tools, that it's pretty amazing how quickly you can do stuff. So I'm almost done with this S already, okay? And I'll show you as soon as I close off the S right there, okay? So I just closed off that S. So there's my S and I'm going to make it a filled I'll make it purple just so you guys can see that it's different so everybody sees how I did that S correct now with that S then what I would do is I would go to my place and fill in the wizard remember I did a 0 0.08 island fill and then I did a 0.1 island fill let's say I wanted that to be black I want this one to be orange um, let's make that's a little bit more of a red. Let's make it an orange there. And there it is. There's that perfect S right there that I just made in literally 30, 45 seconds. And I actually traced, you can see, a pixelated image of it. Okay, and that's basically what I did is I took a picture of the shirt directly overhead to be able to get that image to be able to trace okay um can't do a trace with a cricket deborah i'm not sure i know like with the um with silhouette they do have a, a tool very similar to the beast blind tool but the beast yeah if you do a search on the beast blind tool that's going to give you your ideas as far as how easy it is to do that's pretty pretty simple and i'm not going to lie right off the start as you're getting used to it it's a little bit more a little bit more difficult but once you get used to that tool you'll be amazed at how much you use it okay <clears throat> so with this design now this shirt's an extra large so i'm going to go a little bit larger on this design i'm going to go about i don't know 11.3 inches okay i want to make this design a little bit bigger maybe even 11.5 
So I'm at 11.485. I'm not sure if you can see it up in the corner there. So now what I'm going to do is I have my orange and I have my black. So what I need to do next is I need to actually go ahead and get this ready to cut. So those of you who know, which way would I cut this? When I come over to my templates, would I just use the TRW Magic Separator? Would I use the stone overcut, the stone two plus cut, the vinyl overcut, the, what do, what do you guys think? What would you guys use if I'm just cutting a regular easy weed heat transfer vinyl? If you guys were using and, and cutting and making this, what would you guys do? I see a few of you. It's okay. Can you guys still see okay? I tried to close that um, outside lighting and I just turned on the inside lighting here a little bit more. Let me see if I can get this light on as well. There we go. Um, mirror, overcut, vinyl, overcut. What's up, Irv? How you doing, dude? Uh, vinyl, overcut, vinyl, overcut. Yes, you guys got it. So I'm going to highlight my design and right here is what's called the vinyl overcut, okay? I'm going to right click on that and that's going to automatically mirror it, okay? The reason why I didn't do this, the 2 plus cut is because it's easy weed heat transfer vinyl, that's going to be an easy cut for me, okay? I'm not going to have to cut through much at all. I'm using a 45 degree blade. Vinyl overcut, what that does is once it finishes the cut, it's going to do about another, it's going to restart that same cut, for example, on the S, about another quarter inch. And that's what's going to make weeding those smaller designs so, so, so much easier. Okay. All right. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to see how far this camera will go here. And we are going to come over here to our vinyl cutter. Try not to lose connection here. And let's get this down. Now I am using the, as you can see, the GraphTech CE6040. Now this is the 15 inch version of the GraphTech here, okay? So a little desktop version. I have my white in here. Now I know the white is gonna be that inside cut. So what I really like about the GraphTech, I'm not sure if you guys can see it, is when you're feeding your material in, it gives you a lot of options. It says one for front edge, two for current position, three for sheet. So I'm going to choose one for front edge and it's going to bring it right to my front edge and I'm ready to go. Okay. Now I'm going to do something that we should not do. Okay. So don't try this at home. I'm going to try and cut this without any, I haven't cut on this probably in about a week and I'm going to try and cut it without doing a test cut. All right. So I know I'm just going to cut that inside sting part. So I'm going to go to export and I want to send it to my cutting master three. Okay. So let's go ahead and send this in. and please ask questions of of anything that you guys have while you're in here that's what we're in here for is to uh for me to be able to answer any questions that you guys have that's why i went live with this is to be able to hopefully help you guys out and i know there there is about a 10 12 second delay on this as well so sometimes when you're quite when you put your questions in if it takes me a minute or so to answer it, that's why. All right, so let me go ahead and we got to get these cut lines to Cutting Master 3. It's opening up Cutting Master 3 here. And I'm going to cut my Easy Weed with a 45 degree blade at about a 10 cut force. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit send. You can see the cutter cutting here, perfect for us. Now 
Now again, I made this design a little bit bigger only because it's going on an extra large shirt, okay? So I'm gonna trim this off. Now, I got a couple options right now. I want you guys to tell me what you would do, okay? I just finished this cut right here. What should be my next step? Should I start weeding this right now or should I do something else? You guys let me know. I'm gonna test you guys. While we're in here, we're doing this live, you guys are gonna get a little test. So you guys tell me, should I start weeding that? Of course I'm not ignoring you, Susan. Next color. Yes. Start another cut. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So, <clears throat> let me get the camera up here so you guys can see me. So what I see happen a lot is some of our customers and a lot of people in different people that I see working with vinyl cutters and doing similar type things that we do is that cut gets done. They get excited about that cut and then what they do is they start weeding that cut right away. Okay. The downfall to that is this cutter over here, this guy needs to be working for us all the time. Okay. So if I started weeding this right away, this cutter over here isn't doing anything for us. All right. So I'm going to set up my next cut. I'm going to get that cutting because we don't want to sit here and stare at this actual vinyl cutter. What's up, Rocco? How you doing, dude? So let's go ahead and get our next color in, which I'm putting on the orange shirt. So I need some black Easy Weed. Got a decent amount of black Easy Weed here. I'm going to go ahead and load it in. I know it's going to be the same cut settings. I guessed right with my cut settings on that one, which is awesome. I'm going to hit one for front edge again. It's going to load my material up there. And now I'm going to get it ready for our cut here. So I'm going to show you where I went to on the actual computer here as well this time. So what I did to get my cut to the actual cutter is I highlighted. Um, I'm just going to I'm going to end up doing three shirts for him. The problem is that I just noticed is he has a white shirt and a black shirt as well and I don't have enough orange easy weed to do it so I need to get some from the warehouse downfall to working at home but yes Elisa I would cut all of them at the same time normally and I'll show you guys that right now actually that's a great idea just to show you so Lisa had a great question I have to do a white shirt, an orange shirt, and a black shirt, okay? So he gave me, so far, a black shirt and an orange shirt, and then he's going to eventually give me a white shirt as well. So what I would do is I know that on the black shirt, it needs the white and orange. On the white shirt, it needs the black and orange, and the orange is the inside, but the black is the outside. And then on the orange shirt, the black is the outside as well, right? So technically what I would do is I'm going to cut two of these. That way I have the orange shirt and the white shirt covered, okay? Great job, Lisa. Because again, even though I don't have his white shirt yet, I might as well cut it while I have it lined up right now and everything ready so I don't have to reset that up later, okay? All right. Um, I have the GCC Expert 24 and I can't get the vinyls to stay lined up. I have to cut it off and start over or stand over and watch it. Any ideas? Um, yes, Paula, what I always do to make sure it stays lined up, I don't do a lot of cuts at the same time, okay? And what I mean by that is I'm going to cut two of them right here, all right? I know that this is only going to take up maybe eight inches worth of vinyl. So what I would do is I'm going to feed my cut out eight inches. That way I know that it's all lined up good. And then I'm going to bring it back to my origin or my setting. The thing is, and the thing a lot of people don't realize is it's not the vinyl cutter that's making your material go off. It's human error. It's us. We're lining the material up, not perfectly straight. Okay, and if we do a big cut and it's slowly moving to the side throughout that four or five, six foot, ten foot cut, 
Well, eventually it's going to move off of those pinch rollers and it's going to mess up your entire cut. So however long my cut is, what I do is I feed out the material that entire distance of what I'm thinking that cut is to make sure that I lined it up right because if it goes off, it's me that lined it up incorrectly. Okay, does that make sense? All right, so let me show you on here. Now what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to cut two of these. So I'm just going to duplicate this because I want to cut two of them, highlight them both, and then I'm going to come over here to my Cutting Master 3. And I could have done this in Cutting Master 3 as well. I actually enjoy to and feel like it's easier for me to do it in Corel Draw versus Cutting Master 3 because it's so easy to duplicate something in Corel Draw. So there is both of my settings inside Cutting Master 3 here. I just go to my condition. I can see that my cut force is still at 10. My speed, you can see I never pump up the speed on my cutter as fast as you can, okay? So what I like to do is I like to have it normally at about a quarter speed and it's still really fast. It's, cra it's crazy thing is these cutters are so quick. A quarter speed is still really fast. So I have that all set up good. I'm going to come over here and hit send. Let's come over here to the cutter. And now that this is cutting here, okay, now I can come over to my first cut here in my white and technically start weeding this if I want. So I can pull up on my edge here and start weeding this S here. And now look, it's almost like there's two employees working at the same time, right? I'm weeding this as my vinyl cutter is doing its job, and that's the way it should be. You need your cutter working while you're working to help with that production time. So I got my sting all weeded perfectly there. That's good to go. And what I like to do, and the reason why I always still use the weed box, is I trim around this because I love using scraps for different things. So, as far as scraps for this, I'm going to show you the size here. What do you guys think I could use a scrap this size for? I would say that's 3 inches by 4 inches. What could I use a scrap this size to make and make some money on it? What do you guys think, especially in white vinyl? Um, send a cutter doesn't work. I have the silhouette. Um, Embell, you would actually, you want to make sure that you have um, silhouette connect, okay? So you have to have silhouette connect for the cameo. And you guys are all exactly right. I would use those little numbers on the back for shoes, for uh, a hat all different types of little things like that. Honestly, something this size, I could fit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, probably nine numbers. Do you understand when have, being able to do nine numbers, okay? May, I could probably get in 10. That would be five pairs of shoes. That's $50 in vinyl right there. Retail crawl. So pretty insane, right? So this cut finished. I'm going to hit 1 to view. It's going to shoot it out for me there. Let's go ahead and trim that off. And I think you guys can see my cut right here. So I'm going to find my weed box here. There we go. And start weeding the black here. And I'm only going to weed one of these. And the only reason why is because I don't have the other shirt that he's going to want right now. I don't want to have all of this kind of the mylar backing and the, and the stickiness exposed. 
for it to get different things on it. So I'm going to put it off to the side there and know that I have that and ready to weed it. But I don't want to weed it right now because I don't want it to get stuck on anything or ruined or anything like that. Okay? And one thing that I did there that was a little bit different. Okay? Remember, on this one, I'm going off the inside because that i got to weed out and that white's going inside of this. So just knowing your material that you're weeding before you weed it so you don't weed out the wrong area. I'm going to get my T here. That looks awesome. Let's get my eye there. My in there. And let's get the inside of my G here. And then we are about ready to bring this bad boy over to the heat press and press the shirt. So I'm going to trim this off. I'm going to save this other one for the future shirt. But I'm also going to save this black area for some white shoes to customize. I'm not sure if you guys saw the pictures that I just recently posted last week on Facebook of some new cleats that Jackson got. But he got some new cleats and they're white. And obviously I used black Easy Weed for the white cleats. Okay? I'll come back over here because I know I've missed some questions. Now, if you needed to weed ahead of time, day doing shirts at a craft fair, what could you put on the back to save it to Presley? Honestly, Cindy, what I like to do, some people don't like this. I, I actually like it is I would put the entire design together like this and just stick them on top of each other and just keep sticking them on top of each other okay because I know that that's my two um, vinyls for that shirt all right and then I would literally have if I if I brought transfers for 30 of these shirts I would have all 30 of them stuck together like this I would pull up the white, press that, pull up the black, press that, and then the next one would be ready, and then the next one would be ready. The nice thing about this vinyl is when it sticks together like this, it doesn't ruin it. It doesn't peel it off or anything like that. Sign vinyl, completely different story. Heat transfer vinyl like this, it's a great and easy way to store it like this. Okay, does that make sense, Cindy, as far as doing something like that? And again, once you get into the stones... Again, completely different ball game there, right? Because the way that the stones are, you can't just stack the, the hot fix tape on top of each other with the stones. Then stones are going to be falling everywhere, okay? So, here is one of the biggest reasons, and I'm going to come over here to our heat press, and I'm going to see if I can get our actual camera here wrapped around our light and that will make it easier for you guys to see so let me see if this is going to work here I think it's actually going to work pretty good and let's just go ahead and shoot it down there oh that's beautiful I like it okay I have a serious problem Placing my transfers in the same place when it comes to heat pressing process. Any hints to resolve this problem? All right. Um, Deborah, that's a great question. Okay. So, um, you can use parchment paper between them. Yes, I agree. Um, on the last layer, I would probably use like a parchment paper or something like that. Yeah. Or even an old used one um, as far as your Mylar backing. All right. So, here's one of my issues, is this press right here, okay, is an 11 by 15 Hotronics, okay, Autoclam, my favorite press, all right, which is all great. However, the issue that I have is when you have the 11 by 15, you don't have a lot of space to work with. So, one of the questions that just came through was, lining up and getting it perfect and everything else. As many of you know, one of the hardest things to do, especially with what I'm about to do, I'm never going to get it perfectly straight every single time. And neither are you guys, okay? It's just a fact. You want to get it as close as you can. So, 
with a smaller platen like this and a bigger shirt, it makes it even more difficult. If I had a 16 by 20, all day long, I can get it pretty perfect, okay? With this smaller platen, it makes it a lot more difficult, especially with the big shirt like we're gonna do here. So, I'm gonna grab my shirt here. Um, quick question for you guys, as far as one thing that's a really good tip or trick, okay? I'm pressing this on a polyester, okay? So just an Under Armour shirt that he purchased. And how many of you guys get those press marks on the polyester, like that pressing square that is really difficult to get rid of? Good amount of you? So what you'll see that I'm gonna do here that's a little bit different is I'm going to actually, you can see that, I'm not sure if you can see the temperature that I have this set to, but I actually have this set to about 290 degrees, okay? So even though Easy Weed, I'm gonna cut the tag off here. Even though Easy Weed, it tells you to press at about 305, you have about a 15 degree variance with that, okay? So anywhere from 15 to 20 degrees. I'm gonna go down here about 15 degrees. A little bit less temperature, a little bit less pressure, a little bit longer dwell time. And that means the time that I press it, okay? And that will help alleviate some of those pressing marks that you get, okay? So decrease the temperature with any type of heat transfer vinyl, even with rhinestones. You can normally decrease that temperature about 15 to 20 degrees or increase it. You normally have about a 15 to 20 degree variance with that, okay? Does that make sense to everybody? So, again, very hard to line this up, right? I got a huge extra large shirt here. Sometimes you get those double X's and triple X's. So very important for me to grab the right spot here and see that the shirt's lined up pretty good. And then I'm just gonna pull over the top here and try and get this lined up basically as straight as I can, okay? And again, probably not gonna be perfect. We wanna get it close. So one thing that I'm looking at right here, you see this little seam on the edge? I'm making sure that the other seam on the edge is on that same corner as well. And then I know it's lined up pretty straight. I got my Under Armour logo right there. What really sucks sometimes is these are crooked. And then even if your design is straight because the Under Armour logo is crooked, it's gonna make yours look even more crooked. So it can be difficult, but don't spend a ton of time trying to make it perfect, all right? So here's what I'm gonna do. I have my white and my black. I'm going to do my outside layer first, which is my black. Okay, so I'm looking at the armpits here. I know that I'm pretty good right across, because I remember the armpit goes right across the middle of the chest area. That's my cheat that I always use, okay? So, and I'm a little bit under my Under Armour sign right there. I'm gonna say, you know what? That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. And remember, I'm, I'm good with pretty good. I'm actually looking at my Under Armour logo here as well to kind of help me try and line this up a little bit. Looking at my left edge again, a little bit off the left edge, a little bit off the right edge, looks pretty lined up there, looks pretty lined up there. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna say I'm good to go, okay? Now I am gonna go ahead and use a cover sheet. And one of the main reasons why I'm using this cover sheet is because of the Under Armour logo, okay? So, I'm gonna drop this down for about two to three seconds. And you can see, I didn't even lock it all the way down, all right? So, bring this up here. And all I did is I only pressed that long enough for this black to get down, okay? And get that initial layer down there. I'm gonna come over here because I can't see the questions from where I am. Less temp, less pressure, more time, exactly. Yep. Now, that I did that less temp, less pressure. Didn't have to do the more time yet because remember, we don't want to overpress that first layer because what would happen if I had pressed that first layer for too long? Does anybody know? Tell me what would happen if I, on that first press of this black right here, 
if I were to press that for the full recommended, let's say 10 to 12 seconds, who's got the answer for me? I know one of you do. What do you guys think? Coming over here to see. It won't line up. Exactly. Exactly. What's going to happen is this area right here, it's going to shrink a little bit. And then I'm not going to get perfect spacing between all of the rest of this there. Okay? Does that make sense? So, now I'm going to come back here. Drop this over top there. Let's decrease my pressure a little bit. And I'm going to go down for about a full 10 to 12 seconds this time, okay? And I had it set at 15 because I had some stones going. So I'm going to pull that up now. And let's go ahead and pull that layer off there. Boom. And let's bring our camera over here to show you guys what we just created. Check that out. Pretty awesome, huh? And see the perfect spacing between that whole sting area right there? All of that right there has perfect spacing throughout it because we did that shorter press off the start, the probably about two seconds, and then came back with the longer press for the second one, which is the white, because if it did shrink at all, we already had it lined up, and it'll all shrink at the same time, okay? So there we go, pretty awesome. So now, what we, I was wondering what you would set the heat press for burlap, having problems with it. Um, somebody help me here. Um, give me some help with the burlap, is that, what do you, I don't know that I've pressed burlap, what do you press burlap to? And then what I'm going to do here, I'm going to show you guys, just to kind of iron out the rest of the shirt. Because the shirt was pretty wrinkled. Just do a quick little press there. So now, I'll lay this down for you. To show you guys how we did. I'll lay it next to Jackson's shirt here. And... You guys can see our shirt there. Obviously, he got a much brighter orange, but Jackson's shirt here, the stain right there was only about, and you can see how crooked theirs is. The one that they did for us, ours, pretty perfect. But Jackson's is only about eight and a half inches wide. Had I done the eight and a half inch wide design on this big extra large shirt, it would have looked so tiny it would have looked weird okay very easy for us with a vinyl cutter to change those sizes like that which is pretty awesome uh lisa did burlap on the bunny bags okay so what's the problem you're having with the pressing on the burlap if i have a three foot design to cut is there a secret to preventing the human error for feeding crooked. Tammy, yes there is. Um, I'll show you. Jerry says, burlap is 285 degrees for 30 seconds with no Teflon sheet. Okay. Vinyl's falling off after a few wears. Just remember, if you drop down that pressure, like Jerry's saying there, you want to go a longer dwell time. So, don't drop down that I'm not sorry, that pressure, not the pressure, the heat. If you drop down that heat so much, then you want, but with the burlap, doesn't the burlap have like a little bit of a texture to it as well? You want to make sure that with that burlap, you might not drop, if you drop the heat down a little bit, extend your dwell time, which is your time that you're pressing it for, but also increase your pressure a little bit, okay? Okay, yes, I would say do that, Vanessa, because if you were at 320, probably a little bit too much. Awesome. Yes, a lot of texture, because you want to make sure that have a little bit more pressure on it to get that material to, to get your heat transfer vinyl to kind of form into the texture of that burlap, okay? It's kind of like the same thing I do with the cleats and stuff. 
when I press it, I want to get it to form into that texture of the cleats or whatever I'm pressing. That way, um, water or anything can't get in. So you want to see that texture of whatever you're pressing it to in the vinyl. That means, hey, that's stuck there. It's good. Okay. Um, had another question there. Oh, the question somebody had there as far as Tammy. Tammy, the question you had. So, let's say you're cutting three feet worth of material, Tammy, all right? And you want to make sure that you don't get that human error where it's going to slide off to the side or something. The easy way to do that and the easy way to fix that is, like I said, load your material into your vinyl cutter, okay? Do you want me to show you? Let me show you. I've got a vinyl cutter here. Might as well just show you instead of explaining all right, so let me know. Can you guys see? Can you see the vinyl cutter okay from there? Let me get some of that lighting out of there. Can you guys see the cutter okay? Very bright, but it's okay. So what I would do is when I have my material loaded in, okay, and I'm going to bring it back to my home position real quick. So there's my home position there. That's my start, starting position. If I'm cutting three feet worth of heat transfer vinyl, I would click here and I would literally, well, I don't have enough material here, and that's why it's going to give me the error here. So it's going to stop right there. But if I had a roll or whatever it is, I would actually feed out four feet worth of material, more than I'm actually cutting, okay? And then what I can do, I can hit two for home and it brings it right back to my home position. Does that make sense? So basically what I did is I was just avoiding that human error I was talking about. So if I feed out that entire material that I know I'm going to cut, say I'm cutting four feet, 10 feet, whatever it is, feed out the entire material. And then I know, okay, I didn't line it up crooked. All right. So I know it's going to do that complete cut. It's not going to, because what really sucks is when you get, you're cutting five feet worth of material, it gets a little bit off to the side and then it starts to crinkle all up and you left the room the cutters cutting on the cutting strip the materials all ruined all your cuts are ruined the blades cutting into the cutting strip and ruining your cutting strip which is also doling down your blade i mean a lot of things are happening with that screw up so easy way to avoid that screw up i always do that even if i'm only cutting a foot okay even if i'm only cutting a foot i'll feed it out Hit home, send it back, and cut. Takes an extra 10 seconds, but I never waste material. Um, how would you do that length test with the Cameo? Yeah, same way. I'm 99% I'm sure Cameo users out there, you guys can feed the material out, correct? Because I used to, I would always do it when I would go cut it, okay? <laughs> and never leave the room when it's cutting. <laughs> I agree. I always do. As, as long as I know it's cutting. These are great cutters, okay? So if if we didn't make the human error, it doesn't make a whole lot of errors, okay? If we have the pressure right and if we have the it feeding correctly and everything else, it's not going to make a whole lot of errors. So we're good to go, all right? <clears throat> Man, I like this. I need to do this more often. So I know I'm going to get a... I'm going to have Lorraine yell here pretty soon saying I need to hurry up and get ready because uh, we're headed to church here in a little bit, a little Easter church. But I figured it would be more fun to pop on Facebook Live here and, and be able to answer questions with you guys. Um, GCC Puma, same way, Renee. Just feed it out. Um, the GCC Puma and the Jaguar, they don't have the home button where it sends it automatically back by itself, which is a pretty cool button. But you can just manually feed it back with the, with the arrow on the top and just feed it back. Okay? Yes. We're going to start doing some more of these lives. And, and we have 
70, 80 people in here without even telling anybody about it, which is pretty awesome. And you guys didn't even know. And it's a Saturday here. You guys could be out doing different things and you're hanging out with me. Pretty awesome. Makes me feel like you guys like us. And I look smart today, right? I hate wearing glasses. Um, but Chicago coming up this week. All of you know about the Easter sale, right? The Easter sale is going on right now. It's on the Easy Weed Adhesive. It's on all the foils. And it's also 50% off download designs and the artwork packs, okay? Designs and the artwork packs. So um, Easter sale ends tomorrow at midnight, all right? Uh, back when you trace with the beast blind tool, would you trace to have worked um, dead back? When you trace with the beast blind tool, would the trace to have worked instead? Confused on the tr um, Deb, the reason why, and I'm thinking you're asking about the Corel tracing feature, okay? Um, the reason why I did the beast blind tool is you're going to get a lot of weird nodes and it's not going to be nice and clean with just the basic Corel trace. Okay? So, I knew it was going to... The Corel trace, I would have to go in and edit things on it anyway. Probably would have taken me five minutes. And it still wouldn't have looked as good. By doing the trace myself, using the islands, again, it probably took me about five minutes. And I knew it was going to be perfect. I would always rather spend a little bit of time little bit of extra time on a design, knowing I only need to create it one time, make it perfect, because the less nodes that are involved, the better your vinyl cutter is going to cut it, because it isn't looking at different areas to go to, the cleaner it's going to look, the better it's going to look for your customer, the happier your customer is, the more money you make, and all that good stuff, right? So, that's why I use that versus the... the the tracing tool is pretty cool and it's pretty unique and you can use it in a lot of different ways. I wouldn't use it this way because I was looking for perfectly straight lines in those areas. And the beast blind tool is going to give me a lot of little curves because of the pixelation of the image that I was using. Alright? Alright, crew. Well, I promised Lorene that I would be done. Uh, dang it, I'm late. Around 2.45 and it's 2.53. Because we need to leave in about mm, 22 minutes. I got to get dressed up, which is crazy for me. That means I got to wear a collared shirt, which is crazy for me. But we are, um, we're definitely going to do these more, okay? And love that uh, you guys came to hang out. Please, whenever we're doing these, ask questions okay nicole i'm gonna try to schedule one okay before we leave on probably tuesday or wednesday schedule live training but other than that i'll just pop on randomly as well obviously it's a lot nicer for you guys to know when it is because not all of you have time to just sit down for a half hour 45 minutes so um I am going to try and schedule a live training for this coming week. We'll send it out in an email and let you guys know. We'll post it on Facebook as well, okay? All right, crew. Thank you for coming by. Easter sale is going on right now. 50% off all download files and true type font packs and artwork packs, which is big. And then also, oh, we also have the, has it, have you guys found the hidden Easter eggs? I'll give you a hint. Hidden Easter eggs. There's one on a blue type material that you could possibly use for rhinestones that the first word is magic and it's a flocky type material <laughs> and it probably will take $10 off and the uh, I know another one is on these pages that are really cool for displaying things that my mom might have made for me at some point that will be discounted as well. So those are your hints, I just told you. All right, crew, you guys have an awesome day. Happy Easter, be safe, and um, I will see you guys again 
soon here. And I'm going to try and shut this off. Because whenever I shut it off, it never shuts off right away. See you guys. Have an awesome day.